Right. Hey, Lab Code agents. It's Tristan and Nick. And we've got Bubba Mills, the CEO, Chief Executive Officer, just in case you don't know what that means, for the Corporate <laughs> Coaching Company, which is an international real estate coaching company. Now, with Bubba's background, it's a, it's a big, long, long list of amazing things he's done. So I'm going to shorten it up. He's obviously a coach. Now, he's an advocate of the real estate community, which is great, just like Lee Brown was when we uh, talked to her last week. Mm -hmm. uh, he has just got a whole bunch of information that he wants to share with us. And today we're going to focus on the importance of culture, uh, which a lot of people talk about and know about, but really haven't gotten into the nitty-gritty of what it stands for and what, what we really, really get out of it. So he's got a... A lot of experience. Bubba, tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll have Nick introduce um, the rest of this part. Um, my, my proudest thing is I have two kids and six grandkids and a wonderful wife and a dog. Besides that, <laughs> everything else is Googleable. <laughs> What's your dog's name? What kind Sarah. of dog is it? It's, uh, it's actually a Husky Lab mix. She's 14 years old from a no-kill shelter in San Diego. Um, we got her when she was a puppy and she's 14. And believe it or not, she comes in to work with me every single day. So That's awesome. Is we she have there a dog with family time? office. I'm Where sorry? You're just kind of walking around? Well, she would be. Actually, I have, a, I have a board of directors meeting with a nonprofit that I'm on the board of. So my wife, my wife took her home. Um, so oh, I got if not, I would, I, would, I would show you her. She's amazing. Perfect, man. We just have to do a <laughs> shout out for Brandon, right, Nick? Yeah, I was going to give a shout-out to Brandon in a second, but David Fresca has just jumped on. Tell him hey, to unmute himself. What's up, buddy? I think he muted himself, but feel free to so jump in. I just want to give a shout-out to Brandon Bradley of infinitynetworks.org. He is the guy in charge of making this live stream possible. He's live streaming it into the Lab Code Agents group and on the Lab Code Agents Facebook page. So we love Brandon for doing that for us because we have no clue how to do this kind of stuff. Oh, thanks, Brandon. Um, yeah, Brandon rocks. All right, man. So let's start it off. Bubba, what's your favorite activity outside of work and why? Um, <laughs> I've got an RV, and uh, me and my wife go down to Ren Lake. And sometimes, you know, there's a difference between vacation and working remotely. You guys agree with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so in this industry, most people work remotely. They lie when they say, oh, I took a vacation. That's bull crap. Um, basically, I take my RV down to the lake, and I take no electronics with me at all. And me and my wife uh, sit out there, and we'll go fish in and, and relax. I love that and spending time with the grandkids. Nice, man. I love it. Good answer. I hope they, they're not all going to be this hard, are they? Oh, yeah. Um, next is what do you like to eat? No, I was going to say, Bubba, that like I think wait. that's a... <laughs> Wait, wait. Nick, did you ask what my favorite food is? Is that what you asked? I was gonna ask what I was gonna ask what your favorite color was, but that's 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 too difficult, I think, for us at this point. Perry I was gonna say that, um, you know, I think that's a very good point that you made that there's a difference between working remotely and, and being on vacation because so many of us have so much trouble shutting off. I know me included. So you know, um, to hear how guys like you tackle that 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 challenge is, is amazing to me. You know, it's very difficult for a lot well, of us. You, you don't mind? Let's talk about it for about a minute or so. How's that? Let's sound? do it. I'm ready. Okay. So first, Nick, you're control freak. <laughs> totally. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a coaching moment for you. Most I people know that. that are the D C D personalities are control freaks. They they don't trust. They the fear of taking advantage of is what it comes down to. So the problem is, is effectively delegating is your biggest challenge. Now, you'll tell everybody to do everything. However, you won't relinquish all of the responsibility for it. So I'm sorry um, if, if this is, uh, is this true? No, like you no, can tell me right now. You, we have never met in never. person. No. You just hit them right on the head. You could ask my wife and ask Tristan and all ask right. people like oh, oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so this is, this is what I tell you. One, you have a part-time spouse and kids um, because that, that's just here, – here's a part of coaching. That is the hardest part. Um, it's not making you successful. It's not making you more money. It's not helping build a team. It's, it's, it's actually helping you work um, less and, and play harder and, and because the problem with it is is as you start growing, you get more successful. What happens is 
you start living your life on every single electronic thing, computer, laptop, Surface, Kindle, and you know what? You're, it's going to kill you. And, and so this is what I say. One, you need to be held accountable. And look, that's what a coach is for, right? Um, and, and, and two, you have ki do you have kids? Yeah, two kids. How old are they? Four and one. Okay, so they're not old enough to hold you accountable. So your wife is your accountability coach at home. And you have to allow your wife to say, you know what, Nick? You got 10 minutes to talk about work, and then we're shutting it off. That's just it. On the weekends, if you don't have a team that's going to be able to answer direct calls, sign cards, IVR calls, or whatever, then you can answer your phone twice a day and block it into your day and get approval from your spouse. So one thing, we're, uh, one thing I'm going to share with you guys at the end of this is an ideal weekly schedule. Um, just so you guys know, I'll disclose now, you guys will go to a landing page. Yes, I'm going to spam the hell out of you. Give me your information, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you free stuff. That's just part of marketing. So, but with that, um, I'm going to give you an ideal weekly schedule, a daily activity record that you can hold your team accountable for. I'm going to give you the, the guide to the unicorn culture, something we're going to talk about today. I'm also going to give you the essentials of a business plan because 90% of you don't know what a business plan is, right? Uh, that or it's, it's as thick as this book, which is Traction, which is an amazing book. It's as thick as this book, and you never read it. Um, and then I'm also going to give you an analysis for valuing your company, so basically determining what an exit strategy is for what you're going to do. Everybody says, well, you know, I ask, well, what are you planning on doing? Oh, well, I'm going to work until I retire. You can't retire in this industry. It's just not, not going to happen. It, you, you need to build a sellable business. That's, that's just it. So you can value your company today. And you can actually call one of my business consultants after you fill it out, send it in, and we'll do a free consult for you. Just send it in. We'll set up a call, and we'll go over goods, bads, what you can do to make it different. Sometimes it's not sellable. Sometimes it's legacy. If you're, if you're honing that, a child or family member to go into the legacy part of it, we sell – five to eight clients businesses a year um, we help integrate probably another five to ten that go into legacy where we're, where we're now coaching the family members and taking in the company that kind of stuff hey, Bubba how many how many real estate agents do you coach right now uh, teams so we do not coach agents if you're an individual agent I love you guys you guys are absolutely amazing I would probably refer you over to Tom Ferry or Proctor or Buffini they're great coaches that's what they're experts in Okay. Oh, we do not coach individual agents. We only coach teams, franchise owners, and independent brokerages. That's it. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice, man. Yeah. So, so here's a good question here. Here's where we're going to start it off. When yeah. did you first learn about culture? Well, um, interesting enough, in 1988, I worked for a company called PSB Lending. And we did 135% CLTV in the ninth position, Title I loans. So I did that back in the day when I could have real estate at the same time. You can't do that now. Um, so the culture of the company was self-managed, self-discipline. Everybody was empowered to make a decision to a level. So as I'm working for that company and I'm, I'm – working and, I, and I'm getting in, inoculated into it, they wound up selling and, and they, they sold for big time and they sold the city. I didn't like city, their culture, so I, got, I chose to go to Option One Mortgage and help create their high risk loss mitigation department way back in the day, all right? But the, the reason why is because the culture, I only hired a culture. Every company I've ever worked, financial asset services, when I ran them, a lot of you guys know me from the REO world, right? Everybody loved every asset manager I had. Everybody loved when you called my company, you were treated with respect. It didn't matter if you had 30 days or 30 years experience. And it's a client's first mentality. Um, I have a, a past client from many years ago, amazing people called Joanna Joseph Calloway <clears throat> from those Calloways in Arizona. And they wrote a book called Clients First. No endorsement, no nothing. I'm telling you right now, buy the damn book. It is absolutely amazing. What's the name of the book again? Clients First. Clients First. Yep, okay. and it's actually their life story of, of becoming real estate agents. Coming from, from they, were, they, they wrote articles for USA Today and, and Wall Street Journal. They were, they, were, they were journalists is what they were, and they started. 
they have they have the most amazing culture. Nobody gets paid a salary or commissioned on anything. Everybody gets paid on everything. So an interesting concept, and it's very, very hard to duplicate. But every time there's a closing, every single person in the company gets a piece of profit on that one closing. So the buyer's agent who represented it, they don't get the full commission. Listing partner doesn't get the full commission. Everybody gets a little piece all the way down. That's a culture because the director of first impressions is the most powerful person in your entire company. That's what you call a receptionist. So do you see how the little things in culture, look, I want to compare culture so everybody can understand this because everybody says they have it. Everybody says they have it. So I ask this one question. Do you know what a unicorn looks like? Just from pictures. Yeah, like it's, okay. got, a, it's got a little horn and yeah. it's a horse. It's a horn and it's like this. So you can describe it, but you can't see it, right? Correct. No. Yeah. It, isn't that what culture is? Yeah. yeah. Can your team describe your unicorn. If you ask your team, hey guys, give me some defining characters of what our culture is. Could they all paint the same picture of the unicorn that you are? Hmm. That's a really good question. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, the way that I coach our teams and, and companies, I don't care about hiring superstars. LeBron James is great. But if you had five LeBron James on a team, would you ever get anywhere? No. No. Probably not. You, you wouldn't because yeah. there's no team synergy, right? <clears throat> yeah. So a culture is – it's basically a, a, a defining factor that, that defines your business. If you don't have a defined culture, how do you know how you want people to act? How can you expect them to be self-managed and self-disciplined? How can you expect them to follow a culture when you have never even painted the picture? It's just a mythical creature sitting in, in, in Google somewhere that you've never defined. You know, it's it's interesting that you said if I had five LeBron James, would we have the same outcome? Because a lot of people, when they're starting their teams or when they're trying to make new hires for their team, they're like, you know, I need someone who's like like me, right? <laughs> That's the total. You don't want someone like you because someone like you is not going to be able to do the things that you can't do. So if you had five LeBron James, they'd be good at like one or two moves on the court, you know, and then then what? Right. So well, and that's why every single time that we have a team that comes on board, we do a disc profile on every single team member, and we give you a team disc chart. And if you don't have dots in every four quadrants, you're probably failing. If you got a whole bunch of flaming eyes, damn it, you're not getting anything done. However, you have the most fun on anybody. <laughs> and if you got a bunch of Ds, all you are is a bunch of control freaks that all want to take. That all, that all want to take control, however, nobody's the implementer. See what I mean? Totally. So you can't hire yourself. You need to hire what complements you. And that's why, at the end of the day, when we look at culture, I will hire somebody to culture. Let, let, can I tell you a story? Yeah. I, I coach on stories. Let me tell you a story, okay? I, does anybody get my tip of the week? No. Nope. All right. It's free. It's like a five to seven minute tip every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Okay. You go to my website, put in your little email. Every Wednesday you'll get a tip. So I told the story, right? And it's an amazing story, and it's called Best Buy. So who wants to role play with me? Uh, sure, I'll do it. Okay. Do it. Have you ever wanted to buy a big screen TV? Oh yes. Okay. So you wake up in the morning, you want to buy a big screen TV, right? <laughs> What's the first thing that you do? I look online. Okay, so you go online, bad, 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 bad. You're looking for a big screen TV. Okay, now if you're a control freak, you will you won't order it online. You'll drive down the street to Best Buy, so you yeah, can touch it there. I, I have no patience. I can't wait for it. Okay, I got you. Right. So I'm just gonna tell you this is my life story. I'm t this happened to me. Okay, we looked for it. Looked for everything we're looking for. We got in the car, drove to Best Buy. I could have saved a hundred bucks ordering it online. I don't care about that. I'm a touchy feely kind of guy. If I can't touch it, I ain't buying the damn thing. I've never bought anything on eBay, guys. I'm just letting you know that right now. However, I'm, I am good at technology. So we drive to Best Buy, and you know where the TVs are, right? It's the biggest friggin' wall in all of Best Buy. It's just, bam, it's right there. So me and my wife walk down to the wall, and we're looking, na 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 There is the Sony I was looking for right there. 55-inch, I didn't want to go too big, but I wanted that new 4D, amazing quality picture, 
all that kind of fun stuff, right? So me and my wife are looking for the boxes down below, and all of a sudden this voice appears over here, right? It's a little guy in a blue shirt with yellow writing that says uh, Best Buy on it. And it says Sony on this side. I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. And he goes, can I ask you a question? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, oh, crap, here it goes, right? I'm a good salesperson. However, I love to hear people's scripts. So I said, sure. He goes, it's, oh, excuse me, he said, can I help you with anything? And I said, no, I already know what I want, right? I already went online. In fact, I printed out a picture of it. Here it is right here. This is what I'm looking for. It's right there, right? <laughs> He's, then he says, can I ask you a question? So sure. You know what the hell? If it's going to get you out of my life, fine, ask a question. I just want the damn TV. That's all I cared about, right? So the guy says, is everybody going to be sitting in front of the TV, directly in front of it? In my mind, I'm going, what a stupid question. Are you kidding me? And then I said, okay, I'll play the game. No, actually, I have a sectional. So some people will be at a little bit of an angle. And he goes, the reason why I asked this question is because LG has this brand new TV. It's got one-eighth of a corner. It's not a curved TV. One-eighth of a corner, just a little bit curved, and up to a 35% angle. Everybody looks like they're sitting directly in front of the TV. In fact, it's about $200 cheaper than the one you're looking at. And I went, hmm, wait a minute. You hit me on two things now, price, and I get it customized for my needs. I said, wait a minute. It says Sony on your shirt, and you're selling me an LG. And he said, no, I'm just, I'm Sony certified, so I'm an expert in Sony. But my job is to make sure that your needs are served. I went, oh, mm hmm Oh, wow. Interesting. Did you hire I said, it? Okay. I said, okay, where's it at? And you know what he said? We don't have it in the store. Why don't you come over to my computer and let me pull it up and look for it? And I went, oh, damn it. <laughs> right? So I go over to the computer. He starts looking it up, right? Pulls it up, screws it down. See, this is the LG. This is exactly what it is. I said, amazing. He goes, I can order it, be delivered to your house in 48 hours. Is that okay? So I said, you know what? Actually, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to ask you this question. One, is that somebody you would want to hire? Yeah. Yeah. I would hire that guy. Does the guy want to sell real estate? I mean, he knows how to sell. Okay. He knows, yeah, he knows how to ask the right questions. So I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask you this right one question. He asked you the right questions. Okay. Did he need to be a salesperson? No. He needed to be a solution provider. You agree with that? Ooh, I like that, yes. I like that, dude. That's okay, so now I want you to convert this story into real estate. I wake up in the morning, I want to buy a house. What's the first thing I do? Look online. Okay, I go online, I start clicking around on it and everything else. I can't just go to the house, right? So what do I do? Uh, you make a call. I make a call. call the real I talk to you, right? That's it. At the end of the day, the story that I just told you, the exact same thing. You come into my office, right? This is when you touch and feel things. You come into my office for the buyer presentation. Get the exclusivity signed. Turn around the computer. Okay, let's go through the custom home search on it. What are the most three important qualities you're looking for in a house? Bam, bam, bam. It's usually bed, bath, square footage, or if they want a pool or whatever, and you start narrowing it down. Great, there's 21,000 houses available. Next. You know what I mean? <laughs> my, my job is to get that down to four. There. Wait, isn't, that what, isn't that what this guy just did at Best Buy? Yeah. He basically narrowed down what you need with one thing. <laughs> we don't have to be salespeople, guys. When somebody we're talking to wants to buy a house, we know they want to buy a house. It's really it's asking the right questions and providing the right solution. Is that a culture hmm. that you want in your office? Yeah, 100%. So we don't need a bunch of salespeople. We need a bunch of solution providers. I love it. And if you ask the right question, you're going to get the right answer. Every time you ask the right question, you're going to get the right answer. And there's two transitional statements, out of curiosity and by the way. Those two statements, I can follow it with anything, and you'll answer it. Out of curiosity, Nick, what high school did you go to? Uh, I went to private school, Barnstable Academy. Where's that at? It's in Glen Rock, New Jersey. Now, let me ask you a question. Glen Rock, New Jersey, I'm not familiar with that area. Out of curiosity, why did you go to a private school instead of a public? I'm not going to keep scripting this thing. 
Let me ask you a question. Did I feel like I was selling you or asking you strong questions? No. By the way, Tristan, where did you go to school? I went to school in Pasadena. I love Pasadena. Little old ladies from Pasadena, and they have an amazing parade. <laughs> yeah, great parade. I was born in Oceanside, so I'm familiar with Pasadena. But do you see how the two questions, those two transitional phrases? Yeah. So now we talked about culture, right? We talked about solution providers. Do you feel if everybody in your company had that kind of culture, had that kind of mentality that we're not salespeople, we're solution providers? Everybody we talk to, we already know they want to buy a house. We mm -hmm. just have to fulfill their dreams. We have to provide them solutions because most people don't know what they don't know unless you let them know what they don't know just by asking the right questions. So quit selling. You come across like a used car salesman. And instead, start solution providing. That's all you need to do. And when you have a culture in your office, trust me, anybody who walks in there, you meet me on the street, you meet me on stage, you come into my office, I'm my grandson's playing baseball with your kid, you're going to get the same conversation from me every single day. I'm never going to sell you. I'm going to provide you with more solutions to let you know that I'm the expert. And you need to come to me. You can go to anybody else, but did anybody else treat you the way that I did? That culture spreads like wildfire. Agents want to join your team because they want to be treated with respect. That makes agents, sense. agents would rather give up a 5 or 10% commission and enjoy what they do for a living than sit by themselves and just get browbeated all day long for not doing business. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Totally. I, I agree with that 100%. And I like, I like what you're saying about that culture in a, in a team or, or in an office or in a brokerage. So why, why do you think culture is so important for, let's say, brokerages and, and teams? Why do you think they're important? It's the value system that you provide. It's a value proposition. It's like saying, sign this agreement here. Your culture is like saying, sign up for my culture here. I don't hire the most qualified people. You know what I do? I hired a culture, and I can give anybody the tools and resources. So, Nick, if you don't know how to sell cars, I hire you into my de car dealership. Do you think I could teach you how to sell cars as long as you meet my culture? Do you see what I mean? I'll hire somebody from Best Buy. I tell stories all the time. There was a, a, a cashier at a, gas, at a gas station, hired. Lady makes $150,000 a year. Does about 40 to 60 transactions a month, in, I, I mean a year, in Modesto, California, because we hired her as a gas station attendant. If you, everybody says, I can't recruit, I can't hire, well, stay off of friggin' Craigslist and be present in the moment and talk to people with what you are looking for in the culture of your company because your eyes will be open and the snake will bite you right in the face. <laughs> and the minute that you do that and the minute you look at the personalities and what the people have to give you as a whole, can you teach somebody how to be a buyer's agent or how to be a listing partner? See what I mean? Recruiting's not hard. Recruiting's different. Hmm. So, do you think the retention is higher because of the culture you have, or are you attracting the right type of people based on the culture that you have? Because if, like you you were saying, uh, you hear a lot of organizations and brokerages saying, "Look, we're salespeople. We're salespeople. You get on the phone, call, call." Mm -hmm. Not that it's bad because I like calling. Uh, and then you have the other side of it, which is, I think, what you're saying. You know, we're, we're more of a solution providers, right? We're more solution-oriented. So, I'll explain the difference to you. How's it? Please. Let me do this. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between a team member and an employee? Um, There's not really much of a difference. I mean, an employee will stab you in the back. A team member will stab you in the chest. <laughs> Okay. One is invested and one is not. Sure, yeah. Because here's the thing. In my culture, right, nobody can walk in that door right there. Nobody can walk in that door with a problem unless they have, a, unless they have at least one, preferably two, solutions to it. If not, you're just a whiner. 
That right? is very true. That is very Here's true. the next one. The next one with it is, and I'll give you a perfect example on the teams that I coach. I've got an agent that's getting ready to go to Jamaica for two weeks. All of the appointments they have, all the listings, all the buyers, all everything else are being handled by the rest of the team. They're going to get paid zero commission on it. Zero commission on it. It all goes to that agent. Hmm. So that agent can have a quality of life and go on vacation with his wife and kids. And everybody else is picking up the slack for them. You know why? Because someday they're going to want to go on vacation and get treated the exact same way. Somebody's sick. Somebody's daughter has to go in the emergency room, whatever. It's a team environment. That's a culture that everybody will thrive in because you're not looking around your corner looking to see who's going to stab you in the back. They're going to come right up to you. I had a team member. We got off a team call, and I had a team member come to me and say, Bubba, I didn't like what you had to say. I thought that was very offensive, the way that you said it. And I went, wow, okay. So let's talk about this. And by the time the end of the conversation came out, I did another team call and apologized for the way that I presented it because it was wrong. But if it wasn't for a team member feeling comfortable enough to walk into my office and tell me that, what kind of culture would I have? True. You have you know to be I mean? approachable. You know, you have to be approachable. Can I, can I put that on a piece of paper? Hey, this is what we do at the company. No, it's bread. Because here's the blessing, right? If you guys have that culture, I don't have to release people. I, I don't just, you know, I don't fire people. I release them. It just sounds so much nicer. I release them to be somebody else's challenge, right? Because you know what happens? Right? This is what happens. My team, my team solves a problem. Because if you're treating my team wrong, do you don't think the team's going to say something to you? Don't come to me. Because if you come to me, one of two people are going to get hurt. You don't want me to make the decision. You guys work it out. Because the team will take care of it. It's the same thing. So if you've got four buyer's agents on your team, Tristan, right? Four buyers agents on your team. We got enough leads to be able to put five agents on the team. By the way, don't give more than 25 leads per month per agent. Hmm. Okay? Write that down. 25 leads per month per agent. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay? So we're now at 125 to 150 leads coming in. I got to get another buyer's agent. Do you hire them or does the team hire them? I'm going to go with the team hires them on that one. Okay, so that's a great answer, but do you do that? Oh. No, uh, probably not, no. No, they come in, you love them, hey, you're on the team. And these guys are going, I don't even know who you are, and I'm sharing leads with you. I'm giving up money for you. Yeah, why that's... Don't you, why don't you have the team interview them? That's, you know, honestly, that's, that's, a really, that's a really great piece of advice because my team has had that, that issue as well where, you know, we brought someone in and it didn't, like... It didn't mesh with yep. everyone else on the team. I think that's a really great – that's one of the best pieces of advice I think I've ever heard. What do you think, Tristan? I really do. You know, I'm getting a lot of golden nuggets here, man. Don't so, fire yeah. people. I'm going to follow that up. You I'm going to follow it up real quick. When uh, that person didn't work out, whose fault was it for hiring them? Yours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's okay. the thing. If they didn't work out on the team, hired them, whose fault is it? The team's fault. Oh. And who's going to release them? The team. the team. Welcome to being a rainmaker. <laughs> my right. job is to work on the company, not in it. And the more I have the people in my company, guess what? That's when you go on vacation. That's not when you're working from remotely. Oh, wow. Man. Hmm. There's well, a life in real estate. People are just doing it wrong. That's all. I don't know disrespect. Look, I'm not perfect. Okay? I never will be. And like I said, I'm not for everybody. I sent business to Tom Ferry. I love the guy, right? I sent him to Proctor, Buffini, whatever their needs are. Joe Stump. I don't care who they are. I have literally, and I say this with all humility, I don't have any competition. I've got several peers in my industry. No one's a, no one's a competitor. We don't compete. We all do different things, right? There's no one that's better than anybody else because that's opinionated. I coach on a different way and a different mindset. My company has a culture of coaching. And what we coach is what we're talking about. Some people are going, nah, that's too airy fairy. Great, go to Mike Ferry. Dude, he will he will make you a millionaire. You're gonna be a single agent, I build a team, because you hate people. I'll give you Mike Ferry's phone number. I'll give you Tom Ferry's phone number. They're amazing coaches. 
True, it's man. Just lab coats. You guys post all the time. I'm looking for a coach. What's the best one? Quit. I'm, and I don't know disrespect. Don't ask that question. Yeah. Only you can answer that question. What you need to say is, what am I looking for in a coach? What am I looking at building? I've got clients hate people. Hate people. I got a husband and wife team that won't hire a buyer's agent because they hate agents. <laughs> so instead, we hire their daughter. And they do, their goal is to do 125 to 175 transactions a year. They've been with us for eight years, and they stay in that mark. They mm -hmm. hate buyers. They don't want to manage people. They hate it. It's not in their DNA. Well, Bubba, uh, different people have different needs, obviously, right? Right. Yes, sir. But what specific business strategies do you see yourself recommending the most to uh, real estate agents? So it depends on – I can't tell you what your definition of success is. Okay? Some people's definition of success is to buy a Maserati. Some people's definition of success is to work 10 hours a day in their business and keep the same amount of money they make. Some people say they want to grow and make more money. You have to determine what you're looking at and what that definition of success is. So the answer to that question is going to be completely determined by what your destination in the journey is going to be. I'm going to say probably 70% of my clients, we help open up multiple pillars of business, not just real estate. We have property management. We have title. We have insurance company. I help Hells and a Wife team open up mortgage companies. Um, we have investment portfolios, fix and fit portfolios. Look, I have a business just like you guys have a business, and I can't have every drop of my income coming in from just coaching. You can't have it just coming in from your real estate. You know, when you look at business, there needs to be multiple ways, one, of how you're getting it. You have consumer direct, okay, which is going to be in your online, Facebook, print, um, door hangers, any way you're looking at doing it, consumer direct. You're going to have referrals. I'm going to break those into two, past client referrals, and you have your team referrals. A lot of you people have teams. You just don't know it. Do you have a great relationship with your lender? It's a yeah. team member. Treat them like a team member. they got to come into huddles. Okay? Your title mm -hmm. company, your mm -hmm. inspector, every, they are part of the team. Don't use them just for MSA money. It's completely useless. You know, I, I come from, I did, I don't know how many government contracts. I spoke on stage with, with Fannie and Freddie and U.S. Treasury and, and HUD, and I've done a lot of consulting for these guys. CFPB is no joke. Okay? They're going to be cracking the whip. So be careful with your MSAs. If you guys can take anything away from me, I'm going to make sure you guys look at me. Be careful with your MSAs. It's not what you do. It's the guy next to you that's going to get audited. That's going to make you go to jail. So stop. Make sure you're looking at them. The money is not worth the liability. So make sure they're clean. Make sure you're doing them right. If you're dirty, you're going to go out. And you know what? I'll be eating your lunch when you go. I don't have a problem. You guys, they're, they're now orphan buyers. They don't have a mama or daddy. I'm going to take them on. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? Very true. There you go. Sorry. I had to, I had to pay. No, that's not quite all right. You need to hear those things every now and again. Now I'm going to have my team, I'm going to have my bring, team bring in a cheeseburger so I can be like Vaynerchuk and start eating. Yeah. Sorry. Do it. Do it. Shrimp, I think. Do it. Um, and some lettuce or whatever. Hey, all right. There you go. So... There's so many agents out there that they don't they don't really they can't reach their full potential. They don't know why they can't reach their full potential. There's something holding them back, right? So like what do you think is holding back uh, most agents from reaching their full potential in this business? Two things. I think a lot of it has to do with limited belief, but There you, know. you go. That's oh. my number one. The six inches between your ears. If you can't see it, you'll never be able to achieve it. That that's just it. Bottom line. Okay? Yes. Number two, a lot of agents, you know, what's NAR statistics? The average agent does 1.8 deals per year or whatever it is, right? We have a lot of hobbyists in this industry, you know. Uh -huh. A lot of retired mortgage people said, I'd be great at real estate, and I'm getting ready to go back over to mortgage again, okay? So they do it. That's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But I'm going to tell you right now why most agents are not successful in real estate. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. They don't have the money to do it the right way. People say, I can get into this industry, I can make a lot of money, I can control my hours and everything else. However, if you don't have a plan, 
most people can't afford marketing, advertising, signs in the yard, videography, um, you know, matter ports, 3D. They can't afford it. They just can't afford it. So what they're doing is they're limping along. And when you limp along and do it halfway, your <coughs> reputation is half good. <clears throat> so it's hard for them to get more business. In my opinion, I think every single agent that starts out in this industry should start out on somebody's team. And the reason why is because the team provides the leads. They provide the education. They provide <coughs> the, the transaction coordinating. They provide everything that an agent needs to thrive. If you're there for a year, get your feet wet. You know what? I'm great. Go on your own. The problem we have is people come in with a real estate license. I'm sorry. I think a real estate license is friggin' useless. It teaches you how to fill out a contract. It doesn't teach you how to represent somebody on a million dollar investment. Cosmetologists have to practice more and look what happens. It's okay? very, yeah. So I think you need to have, or you need to be mentored. Maybe you're not on a team. You have a mentor. You should only get 50% of your first 10 deals. You need to pay to learn. That's just that I pay to learn. You know, I really think that that's a great point because, you know, a lot of agents out there are like, well, you know, we're like doctors or we're like lawyers or whatever. They, whatever they, you know how expensive medical school is? Or yeah, not? Well, they are like doctors. They don't pay their taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you're right about the 50%. Yeah. I mean, you do have to pay your dues. I mean, I've always been on a team, and, uh, you know, real estate is – probably one of the most expensive uh, careers to choose. I mean, because you're just, you know, if you don't have a sphere of influence, I mean, you still have to pay to work your sphere of influence. That's not cheap. But, you know, if you don't, then, you know, you can't just, no one's going to just call you. So. Yeah, when's the last time your buddy from high school called and said, hey, I don't know what you're doing today, but do you sell houses? <laughs> right, no. nobody. You know, hey, yeah, I just that doesn't happen, house. right? I just bought a house. Really? Oh, I didn't know you were an agent. Well, and here's the other thing, right? If you have a team, I don't like putting buyer's agents just in a buyer position on teams. I want them to be an ISA, 30, 60, 90 days. If they're not good on the phone, they're not good at organization, they're not too good at time blocking, and they're horrible at overcoming objections and scripts, then why am I trusting my leads with you? And you, you know, know what? It pays it forward because then all the age, you're setting appointments for the other agents on the team. So they're getting a value of that new team member, and then you graduate from there into a buyer's agent, right? Yeah. And then the next one comes on board, they're an ISA. Ba, 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 ba. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Then the team, you're actually benefiting the team as much by hiring a new agent to come on board. That's just my opinion. It, no, it's interesting you would say that because uh, the Loken Group in Houston. Lance? Yeah, Lance. Yeah, yeah. So he, they, they, that's how they start everyone out on the team. Right, Tristan? Was their, their ISAs for like three months. Yeah, they had like yep. a 100-day uh, training. Yep. Nice and um, I also have a friend who's an agent down in central Jersey named Joe Oz, and he actually has his buyer agents calling FISBOs for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the way, they, the way he does it is they, they, make, they make the call, but they don't make the call to, to try to list the property. They make the call to try to start up a relationship and go visit yep. the property, and then they follow up over the course of a few weeks, and they realize that Fizbo is getting frustrated. They're like, you know what? You know, let let me let me put you in touch with Joe. He's our listing specialist, and by that time, that buyer agent has has uh, prospected this that Fizbo, and then what's going to happen? They're going to get the leads from that listing. Okay, you guys want a golden nugget? Yeah, yeah. another one. You guys want to learn how to generate business on Fizbo's without generating business on Fizbo's? Yeah, shoot. Okay. Here's a script. Follow along with this little role play thing. All you guys have a lending partner. You agree? Yes. Yes. Okay. I need to prime this up with this. You guys know what an IVR system is? No. Okay. Not if you don't know what an IVR system is, when you're no. driving down the street and it says, call this number for pre-recorded information. Oh, yeah. Huh? Interactive yeah. voice response. It's called Dang. an IVR system. Or text for it. Okay. If you interview FISBOs and you say, why are you selling your house yourself? A couple of things. I don't trust realtors. They're dirty. They're liars. They, they get paid too much money. They suck. I can do it myself. Two, I don't have enough equity in my house to pay for an agent. Depending on the area, 
get out of judgment and get into curiosity. Okay? What percentage of FISBOs do you actually convert that you're calling? Five, ten, eight, two percent? I'd probably say about two percent. Two percent? Okay. So you're losing ninety eight percent of it because you're not thinking out of the box. So right. here's your box. Okay? I'm going to expand your box. The other person that's on your team, your lending partner. Have your lending partner go and get an account with VoicePad. Okay? Have them pay for the writers. They're going to contact they're going to contact the consumer and say, "Hey, you know, this is Bubba, you know, with with Bubba Mortgage and I notice you currently have your houses are for sale by owner." Now, I don't know exactly why you're doing it by honor, except for the licensed professional. However, we have a service just for the people in this community that we will help pre-screen people to come into your house. Worst mm -hmm. thing you can do is everybody that calls your number wants to look at your house, you open it up, you never know what kind of person is walking through. You don't know if they're qualified. You don't know anything else. So this is a free service that we have to provide for you. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is we'll put our pre-recorded information on the top um, of your for sale by owner so they can call that number and get information 24 hours a day. We'll answer it live so when they call in we'll be able to um, give them information in regards to the property. So you'll, you'll do a manual recording instead of text to speak. Right. If you're a real estate agent you can use your MLS IDX code and it'll do text to speak. Three bedroom, two bath, 1800 square foot on a cold sack, it'll read your stuff. You can manually program anything, that's what you do on FizzBuzz. So they'll go and record all that information. Now, all those leads are coming into your mortgage company. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Who gets to represent the buyer? I do. Merry you... Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's okay. pretty simple, pretty simple and, and I think very effective. Here's the second good. piece. Here's the second piece to it, right? At about 30-day mark, your lender, you have to script your lender on this because they have no clue what the and IVR system is. So you script your lender on this thing and say, oh, you know what, hey, Mrs. Smith, just need to let you know, I'm going to send you our copy of a report. We've only had actually eight calls in 30 days. Our average house that we, that we have this product on usually averages between 15 and 30 calls per month. I don't know exactly what it is, if it's a marketing or advertising or anything else. Look, I've known Nick over at Baldwin Real Estate for the last 10 years. I'm not selling you on him or anything else. However, he has an agreement with us, and he'll do a 30-minute free consultation with you to be able to help you get the maximum exposure to your house. There's no commitment or anything else. I just hate to see this because you understand what your average monthly payment is, what, 3500 bucks a month, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance? Every single month you're sitting on that property, you're losing 3500 bucks out of your pocket. Now, your goal is to sell this house and buy a bigger one. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So as this property is appreciating at $350,000, this property is appreciating at $600,000 at the same rate. So you're losing money on a monthly basis. So, you know, it might be worth Nick coming in, doing a 30-minute consult with you, and seeing what he can offer you. How's that sound? Sounds great. Come on in. You didn't do anything. You see what I mean? This is where partners in the industry – I'm tired of saying vendors. Okay, well, I don't have vendors. I have well, it partners. Goes it goes perfectly into what you were saying. It's, you come from a solution-oriented um, aspect of it, which Correct. is awesome. Correct. I now, when it. you're doing a FISBO and you're talking to them and they say no, why don't you say, okay, understandable, I don't want to see you suffer, I don't want to see this. Most FISBOs on the market in this area go anywhere between 68 and 120 days. You're going to lose 3500 bucks a month. Why don't I have my lender call you as a community outreach program for for sale by owners that can at least help you get some advertising on the property? How does that sound? See what I mean? Now you're selling your lender. That's what teamwork's about. That's, That's the value. Now let me let me ask you a question. Did I say anything about culture during any of this? No. Do you know what my culture is now? What's that? Can you explain how I run my company? Can you give me adjectives? Just listening to me talk for the last 40 minutes. Do you feel that you understand the culture that I have in my company? Oh, yeah. We can, we can totally feel it. We actually felt it the first few minutes, man. It was pretty good. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't tell you what the unicorn was, what color it was, how big its horn was. I would okay? say that, that, that your team is 
always out for one another and not just out for themselves. And it's 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 a, a, a communal effort because one person since one person succeeds and everyone succeeds. Now here's the amazing piece. My operations, my support team on every company, on the real estate side of it, your transaction coordinator and your closing coordinator are probably the most important people on your entire team. I can replace, Nick, if you're working for me, I could release you today and replace you tomorrow. You agree with that? Uh, yeah, you can, you can bring someone else in, sure. Okay, but can I replace a transaction coordinator that quick? No. No. They are priceless. However, we treat them like crap, and most of the time we don't even treat them like part of the team. So I'm going to ask you to do this exercise. I would like for your transaction coordinator to go in the field with one of your agents. They think all they do is drink alcohol and sponsor golf tournaments anyways, right? I want you to go in the field, okay, with your agent. And then I want your agent to sit in that operations desk for half a day too. So I explain it this way. Everybody knows what a Ferrari is like, right? One of the most off-the-line 640 horsepower is coming out of there. Could I take that motor and put it in a Yugo? Will the uh, frame, the chassis, the no. transmission, and the tires handle that much horsepower? Probably not. No, it's completely useless, right? However, if I had a Ferrari body and I dropped in a motor from a smart car in it, would I get anywhere? Uh, it, not really. Do you see how they have to work hand in hand? Your mm -hmm. operations and your sales team have to be clicking at the same pace, have to have the respect back and forth. One has to respect the other. You know what I like? A transaction coordinator that's a little backed up and an agent saying, you know what, let me call the buyer's agent and get that for you. How's that sound? That's okay? awesome. Yeah, I love that. They, yeah. are, the, they are part of your team every day, part of your team. Well, question here. David, you have a question, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, but I'll throw it out there. I wanted to know from you, Bubba, how important is establishing a – mission statement and how congruent does it need to be with your culture? So your mission statement, your vision statement, and your core values are mandatory in everybody's company. So David, I have to explain it to you this way. If you have a team and you're stay under Keller Williams, right? Keller Williams has their own statement. You need to have a team vision underneath there, right? And core values that go with that. If you, I, I'm going to explain it to you this way, okay? If I, where do, where do you live at, David? Uh, San Diego area, County, La Jolla. San Diego. I want you to drive to Omaha, Nebraska. Do you know how to get there? <laughs> yes, I can, yeah. But. Yeah, you can? I couldn't. I couldn't just get on the freeway and start driving. I'd have to go to, like, Google and Google Maps and get a map, right? <laughs> or I have to choose. I have to fly. Or I'm going to go by train or whatever. Please. Your mission and vision is your transportation, how you're going to get there and why you're going. When mission and visions are done, it's who we are and why we're here. Your vision and mission might be different. Every team in KW has their own goal. KW has their big one, okay? But the teams have their own little visions of what they're going to do. That has to stay in line with the company. Remax the same way. Caldwell, Century 21, it doesn't matter what it is, okay? If you don't know your mission and vision and core values, how can you expect the public or your team members to know where they're going to go with you? They, don't have, they have no clue how to get on the journey. True. You got to get on board. That's now, very, that's so the true. essentials of a business plan, that document, it's about, 20, uh, about 15 pages long. There is actually an exercise in there to build your mission, vision, and core values along with your business plan. So in there has an exercise, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do this. You guys are the rainmakers. Everybody out there who's a team leader or whatever, you're the rainmaker. You're the final decision. However, I use this statement a lot. It's called foster inclusion. So basically what that means is have your team help. If your team helps write a mission or a vision or core values, then what? They have buy-in to it. So it's not a dictatorship. Right. So if you do this exercise, and you could take a page out of there and give it to each one of your agents 
And this, this is amazing how this works, right? You're going to give the same page to your agents as you're going to on your operations team, okay? But don't put any names on it at all. Have them put no names. I don't care. I don't want to know it. And just have them turn it in, okay, into, into a box in the break room so you don't know who did what. You'll see two different answers come out on every one of them. Operations are usually more of a C or D personality. They're more thought. They're more they're thinkers. Okay? The I and the S personalities, they're feelers. So you're going to see, oh, I, I, I feel that we should be a, a, the American Dream Solution team. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right? And then the Ds and the Cs, you're like, we're solution providers. You know what I mean? You're going to get two different theories that comes out of it. It's the best exercise you'll ever have. Because now you know what they think about the company, what they think about the culture. You guys need to get a book called Five Dysfunctions, Patrick Lencioni. Five we, Dysfunctions. You're right. So every team that we do, we go through a five dysfunctions, and usually about once a year. I have teams that literally read the book every year and do an exercise every single year. And it breaks up the five dysfunctions of a team. I have teams that have been with us for 15 years. They have dysfunction. I have dysfunctions here. I'm not perfect. I will never in my life strive for perfection. I will strive for excellence. But I'll be humble enough to know I'm not perfect. And you neither will your team ever be. In, in, my, in my mind, there's only one perfect person. It, it ain't me, and he's got a lot more hair. The yeah. five dysfunctions of a team, is that the one you're talking about? Yep, five dysfunctions. Patrick Lencioni. All right. I'm so I have a quick question. If you're going to have your team write help write the vision, vision, mission, and, and core values. So then who, like, let's say, you have, who writes the, who writes that first, though? Like, uh, everybody does. In the exercise, Vic, so you know, in the form, it'll break it down to, like, eight different questions for mission, eight different questions for vision, and for core values. You'll see in there, if I ask you to sit down and write down your mission statement, do you have a mission statement right now, Nick? I uh, for my business. Yeah. Yes. Give it to me without reading it. No, I don't have one. <laughs> so You're like me, I'm like, yeah. All right, sounds good. Sounds I know good. I need one. I know I need one. I know. I know. I know. I know. So what it comes down to is everybody has to live and breathe it. Okay. And if everybody helps with it, and there, there's, I mean, they're easy. You know, we're responsible for our actions. We choose to be happy. We learn to forgive. We persist without exception. We're a company of action. You guys want to read all these again? Right? Read the book, Traveler's Gift. Traveler. Andy Andrews. Traveler. All of our core values come from that book. Andy Andrews, The Traveler's Gift. All six of them come from that book. Amazing book. I don't, I don't just have an epiphany while I'm going to the bathroom and coach on it. Uh, what I do is, <laughs> right? Uh, like, Mama, where'd you pull that from? Well, it came from a book, actually. No. Um, I don't, I don't teach on anything until it's, it's, it's been tested in truth. So every time, here's a perfect example. I'll give you the culture of my val of my company. You know, you guys know Boomtown, right? Yeah. We helped write Boomtown scripts seven or eight years ago. Wow. Okay. We we we've been with Boomtown forever. Do you know how much money I've made on Boomtown? A lot. Zero. Oh, zero. I was going to say that. <laughs> it's the opposite. Do you know, do you know how much money I've made on Commissions, Inc., or Prime Seller Leads, or um, All About Real Estate, or anything else? I take zero rev share. I'm one of the few companies. I'm not going to say all, but there's a couple more. 90% of the coaching companies out there take a rev share from every company they've got. I will never, ever, ever take a rev share on anything that I ever do. And the reason why is because I have to have enough integrity to sit here in front of you and say, look, I did ProQuest for years. They were my name coming out on IVR systems. If I took money from ProQuest and VoicePad came along and they weren't so amazing, would I ever change the VoicePad from ProQuest? No, because the money would be in the way. Look, I love ProQuest. Scott, I love you. You're absolutely amazing. <laughs> VoicePad has more, it just, they've increased the technology part of it. And it's a team-centric pad. They actually, not only text, right, but phone calls, and they record it in English and Spanish. 
So depending on your market, it's automatically say hablo espanol. <laughs> wow, what's the name of that company? Voicepad. Voicepad, so voicepad.com. Yeah, I just say Bubba sent me. I oh, like to say I like to hear thank yous. I just don't take any money. <laughs> Bubba sent so, me. This is when you go on my website and you see all my preferred lenders on there, not one person has ever paid me a dime. They wow. have to be vetted. They go through at least six to ten of my clients. They give us the product for free for six months. We beat the living dog crap out of it <laughs> and we give them back feedback. If they don't fix it, their name's not going on my website. So if you want to know what, what people out there actually beta tested, okay, that I'm not taking money from, you can look on my website for it. Wow. Too. All right, guys. Any other questions so we can conclude and wrap it up? Uh, David, do you have any questions, David? You know, just the last one. And Bubba, can you give us some suggestions as far as some great companies with great cultures right now that we could, you know, get some great examples of what we could do to emulate? Uh, real estate companies or just companies in a whole? Companies in a whole. Well, I know there's companies like Google and Apple, but yeah, real estate specifically. Oh. Um. If you want to know, like, okay, so if you want to know, like, teams that we're coaching that you could call, um, Jason Shempa, he's in Cape Coral, Florida. Jason Shempa sold his house in March, bought a fifth wheel, and is traveling to the United States and Canada and running his company remotely because the team is self-managed, self-disciplined. They have That's that culture. Cool, dude. Wow. What's his name? Jason Shimpa, S H I N P A U G H, the Jason Shimpa team in Florida. Andrew Duncan, you guys are probably you guys have heard Andrew Duncan. Yeah. Um, he's another one of our clients. I mean, to be, you know, to be approved by the Tampa Bay Lightning. You know, I have. Oh, just wait. Oh, I need to say something, guys, real quick. I apologize, David. I'll give you more. We are not owned by Barbara Corcoran. Just disclosure. <laughs> Barbara Corcoran has nothing to do with my company at all. Nobody thinks that. Nobody ah, thinks that. Ah, that being I, said, Barbara oh, Corcoran. I thought that. I thought uh, that originally way back. Yeah, wait, Bubba, it, 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 Bubba, you do have you do have a picture with her on your Facebook. I do so, because she endorses so, sixty eight of our clients. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. I've also got pictures with me speaking with Tony Robbins and and uh, Damon. You know what I mean? I do a lot of speaking. So just so yeah. you know, Barbara's not – our clients are endorsed by them. They have to get qualified. Most of them are in RATE, R-A-T-E, Radio and Television Experts. Um, that is a partner of ours that um, – we do a lot of TV. We also do radio. Um, Glenn Beck, um, Hannity endorsed local um, – local, um, Stations, you know, whoever your local jockey is there, we work with them on contracts and everything else. Rate is amazing at that. So if you're looking at getting into that, go to Radio and Television Experts, Matt Wagner. Now, do you? Now, this might be a stupid question, but you just do real estate teams, correct? You don't do any no. other industries. No. No. no, I coach mortgage. Oh, okay. Yep, I coach small business. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. All so right. I want you, I'm going to ask you the single the single question. What I just taught you. Is any of that transferable to your watchmaker down the street? Oh, totally. Totally, yeah. I teach you how to run a business. That's what I do. I just so happen to be an expert in real estate in a mortgage. And you know, I teach people how to run a business. See, that's that, that we talk about a lot, a lot about that in, in the group, whereas a lot of agents don't treat it like a business. Mm -hmm. They so don't. It's super important to, to treat it like a business because otherwise you're just, like you said, a hobbyist for the most part. Yeah. Look, I, I, I could teach anybody how to run a company. I got a company down here called Sips and Splatters that we helped, and it's basically cannabis and alcohol. It's actually a new. It's actually oh, we got a, one of those down here, actually. Right, exactly. We made it to the fourth round of Shark Tank. One away from getting on TV. That's awesome. So, I, I got a. I, got, I had a coffee shop that I that I coached. Um, Eric Zamboni, the grandson of the Zamboni, the founder of the Zamboni, the one that cleans the ice. We, he, has a, he has a chiropractic um, sports therapy company in Oregon. We, we coach him. It, business is business, gentlemen. If you can't run your business, I don't care about selling you real estate. And that's yeah. different. So, look, before we hang up, guys, you guys need to go to this. I'll put it on the screen, too. www.getbubbasnotes.com 
slash lab coat. C O A T. I forgot the S. I apologize. Tristan, put it in the put it in the, in the thread there, man, because I want to do it too. You're gonna have to read it. Hold on. Get Bubba's Notes dot com slash lab coat. Get Bubba's Notes dot com slash lab coat. Got it. Boom. Love it. So. In there, you're going to get an idea with the schedule, daily activity record. You'll get this unicorn culture guide, essentials of a business plan, and the analysis form. And look, I'm not going to sell you, but I'm going to tell you right now, do me a favor. If you go to our website, corcorancoaching.com, which is on my header rare, go in there to tip of the week at the bottom yeah. and put in your email address, and you're going to get the video tip of the weeks. They come out every Wednesday. They're five to seven minutes. We're actually in the middle of a series right now, the 10 um, essential qualities of a leader. Um, so every week we do them. Um, it, it, they're just business tips, and it's this is it's awesome. Great. This is awesome. Look right there, baby. Yeah, I love it, man. All right, I'm downloading it. Bubba, thank you so much for your time. We we really appreciate it, man. Bubba, the, the 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 feedback on, on the on the on the video is people are like, I can't get enough of this. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who is this guy? He's awesome. Hey, hey, hey you know what? I'm yeah. happy. If you guys want to do another one of these things. I, think we're gonna have to, yeah. I love, if you can't tell, I love talking. And because of this, I get to look at myself, which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Tristan, hey, Tristan will tell you, you got me to shut up for an hour. That's, hey, you know what? Yeah. Can, can I plug one thing? Sure, dude. One. Yeah, yeah, go for it. All right. Every year, we have a leadership summit. It's in Orlando. If you go to our website, corkandcoaching.com, go in the events tab. We have about 50 of the Wall Street Journal um, recipients that attend every single year. It maxes out at about 175 to 200 people. I do not do 2,000. Um, they don't happen. They're, they're maxed out. At, I max is about 200. Um, and what we do is we have people that do between 100 and 900 transactions a year on a panel. So you're getting education from your peers. And you know, we um, moderate them. And we have you know, guest speakers. Um, it is absolutely amazing. Every, I mean, people just come back every year, every year. It's not a conference. It's a summit. I will never do one with 2,000 people. I go speak at those. I can't get enough one-on-one -on -one time with people well, well, if I go do 5,000 people. Got a quick Sir? question for you. Sir. We might, we might, what are you doing on October 26th and 27th, man? We're going to do our Lab Coats event in Miami. We'll have about 300 agents there. When? It's available. Check the schedule. October 26th and 27th. So what are you asking, gentlemen? Yeah, what? you want to come and teach. Come down, bro. Yeah, you want me to come? Down. You want me to come teach? Yeah, do a do a, a session, do a breakout session, and you know teach about culture and you know, wisdom. Elaborate more on what we discussed here. You know why? If I, this is my challenge. Okay. I would be happy to do that. One, I'll tell you, I'm in. Let me check my calendar. I'd be happy to come do it for you. I think. I, I think what would be better um, instead of that um, is I can start out with culture, but I'd like to have a live coaching session. Okay. I get a lot of value from those yeah, because yeah. I can sit here and tell you what I want to tell you, but 50% of the people on here are like, I don't want to hear about culture. I want to hear about something else. You know what I mean? Listen, so honestly, I, it, I do an open live coaching session for so a couple like an hour and a half or whatever, I think an hour and a half to two hours, whatever the – Breakout sessions are going to be whatever, dude. Whatever you want to do, do that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'd be happy to do that for you guys. Let me look at my schedule and get back to you on that. All right, All right, so well, guys, any other last questions? I'm good. I'm going to rewatch this a few times. You know, yeah. obviously. Just want to thank <laughs> you. Yeah, no, it's, it's weird because when you're in it, like yeah. you got to go back and watch it as yeah. if you know, you're not in it. So. I'm with you. Look, I I pre I'm, I was humbled by the request of coming on here. Um, I appreciate you guys. It's an amazing. Um, you know, you guys have put on a great team. You've done something a lot of people haven't. There's so many friggin' little groups out there that just piddly in and out of it. I, I love your organization because people actually share. The, the, it's not a secret sauce. When somebody yeah. asks a question, you actually get results, and I love that. And stay That's that so way, cool. guys. It, it's, it's a great – you know what? LabCult has an amazing culture. Thank you. We try very hard to, to keep that culture alive, and Tristan and David and I are like 
in there every day, like trying to keep that focus and that culture going. Hey, I just want to let you know that with this video, we streamed it live to Facebook. We reached over 3,000 people, man. That's crazy. One hour. And Brandon, thank you for doing that. Thank you very much, Brandon. Brandon. With Infinity Networks, man. Brandon did this. Brandon, thanks, man. Brandon, throw your, uh, if you have a minute, throw up your, your, what, your website there again, too. So thank you for that, Brandon. All, All right, right guys. gentlemen. I appreciate the time. You guys need anything, go to my website. You guys want to talk to one of my business consultants, send an email. I'd be happy to do a consult with you guys to grow your business. Have an amazing day. Let's kick some butt in 2016. I'll see you guys in uh, Miami.